all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and uh, taking a look at the most recent reveal for our warcry tabletop skirmish game if you're new to the channel make sure to like and subscribe for reactions reviews news painting modeling conversion tutorials for warhammer 40,000, kill team necromunda age of sigmar warcry pretty much any of the games workshop uh, tabletop games so let's take a look. A rotten Warcry rogue carves his way out of the Gnarl Wood. So we see once again the new Warcry logo. Uh, that does imply that we're getting a new edition of the game. Typically when they change the logo is when we see a revamp of the game. So it is very, very possible that we're seeing not only a new setting and new models, new warbands, uh, you know, possibly new terrain, but also a new actual edition of the game so sort of expecting a warcry second edition here uh hopefully there's not a ton of changes as overall the game functions pretty well i think balance is probably the most important thing as long as the game is balanced uh warcry is overall pretty simple pretty fun and uh, can have completely mixed results from one game to the other because of the deployment setups because of the map layouts and then also because of the actual like missions as well so with the twists involved literally no two games are ever the same uh, so definitely looking forward to what they have changed or improved on for this what appears to be a new edition of Warcry. so that being said let's jump right in so in the realm of beasts between Galet and thondia nestles a hellhole known as the gnarlwood this inhospitable forest is full of carnivorous critters and flesh-eating flora and it is the stage for the latest round of blood slicked Warcry skirmishes and home to colorful characters such as the Rotmeyer Creed Carrion Catcher. So this guy is the Rotmeyer Creed Carrion Catcher. Very cool model here. So I really like the overall look of him. He's definitely sort of like a kind of Blight Lordy Nurgle type guy. Uh, obviously we can see he has like some weird kind of like mossy stuff on him sort of like camouflage uh, he has the kind of green colors overall we don't see the typical like rot that we would see with like a nurgle kind of warband so maybe there's a little something more going on here uh, he obviously has a sort of strange looking weapon a uh, big stick with a couple spikes on it and then it has a hook with some rope in it as well so you know maybe some ability to like pull people or possibly some kind of strange like ranged attack where he can sort of sort of like fishing rod the hook at you uh i just sort of picture it how he let you like you would cast a fishing rod and like uh you know a sinker and hook on the end of it uh similar to like what he would potentially do with this so maybe there's some sort of ranged attack and then he can then pull you towards him or something similar to uh what we saw previously there was sort of like a uh, javelin or harpoon with a rope on it uh, so maybe we're going to see something like that maybe not uh, it's also note worthy that he is standing on some sort of like stilts now the way he's standing the stilts don't appear to be that tall but it could be because they're like sunk into the ground uh, it could also just be that there's a couple inches of whatever on the ground that's dangerous so you don't want to be touching it but overall model is pretty interesting uh, the final note about him is is they did obviously he has like a kind of wood armor with some metal bits in it um, and then some sort of like I don't, I don't know exactly what these are they sort of remind me of like stalks from like a uh, um, oh man why can't I think of it not, not a palm tree, but bamboo, like bamboo kind of stalks hanging down as, again, like a kind of armor as well. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is, but very interesting kind of blend of aesthetics here. Uh, they did mention also that the home of colorful characters, such as the Rotmire Creed. Now, we don't know. Is he an actual character? Or they're saying like, oh, man, he's a real character. We don't know that specifically. Um, but very interesting so I guess the real question is, is this guy part of a warband or is he an individual character? And I would have to say that part of a warband is most likely. Uh, so let's continue on down here. Oh, so relatively short article, honestly. Uh, so with a name like the Carrying Catcher, we suppose his rope hook is used to grab slain foes from the forest floor to use as food later. It also looks like it would be a handy tool in a fight. Uh, so yeah, definitely, obviously what I was just saying. Uh, those stilts suggest that he might spend a lot of time lurking in the swamps to the north of the Narrowwood, and the green moss he's taken for camouflage has a putre putrescent feeling. Okay, so they kind of noted on that. So he might be walking around in a swamp, which is why he would need the stilts. This is sort of like a green moss camouflage on him, not like kind of like a rotten Nurgle type thing. 
Uh, so the Rottmeyer, and again, the reason I kind of thought Nurgly is the name Rottmeyer Creed, but again, we don't see seem to see like the same kind of like bloated, kind of rotting flesh. Uh, the Rottmeyer Creed are currently embroiled in a running battle with the Horns of Hashet. Okay, so interesting. So the Rottmeyer Creed is clearly the warband's name. The Horns of Hashet are the other warband that we saw previewed already. Uh, so clearly those two are to face off. So possibly this will be the two warbands in a new starter set. Uh, attempting to prevent the fires of industry reaching the woods of Gur, then burning down their nice wet swamp. Okay, interesting. So there's surely be more from this motley band of stinky woodsmen so stay tuned to the warhammer community website and subscribe to our newsletter to keep you up to speed with warcry and beyond so there'll surely be more from this motley band of stinky woodsmen referring to the rottmeyer creed which obviously you know in battle with the horns of hasha so i think this basically just confirms this is one model from a war band we can kind of see that this war band will probably be covered in some sort of like various moss and like wood camouflage slash armor uh, again typically seeing like sort of chaotic chaotic looking you know chaos e war bands sticking to like the overall theme of warcry even though we have other war bands in it or other factions in it from the main game um overall the main factions from the actual game are typically like sort of various chaotic themed factions so we see some of them are more like you know barbarians with no armor others are you know completely armored in metal you know we see all the various different things you know from like savages to spider worshipers etc so quite a bit of diversity in the game i'm a huge fan of warcry it is extremely fun it's simple it's quick and enjoyable to play uh, also the war bands are super awesome the balance is not super amazing uh, shooting like range attacks are very strong in the game there's also a couple other like really powerful sort of like characters or stat lines in the game as well so the balance isn't always the best speed is very important because it's an objective based game and some of the warbands are low on numbers and kind of slow so it's really tough for those warbands to kind of compete on either with not enough models or just not fast enough so overall somewhere in the middle is kind of the balance like you don't necessarily need 20 guys that are all extremely weak to win the game but also like you're probably not going to be winning a lot of games if you have five super strong guys either so kind of somewhere in the middle is the sweet spot somewhere around like 12 to 15 guys with some hard hitters a lot of like speed but obviously using numbers so we'll see how these warbands look we've already seen the horns of hashut it was around can't remember exactly but i want to say it was right around that that regular kind of 10 member war band which is typically what these are so i assume that this guy we're seeing right now probably has nine friends that we're going to get to see pretty soon i do like the overall aesthetic of these i like how different they are i really like how much all the war bands they've created are different from each other and uh, how they you know the there's really only so many rules in war Kai and like special abilities and kind of like the faction ability cards and everything there's really only so many rules and then they sort of just mix up those rules between the different war bands so you might have two war bands with almost all the same special abilities like very very similar but the war bands are completely different because the stat lines are different and then you might have literally two war bands where there's one guy in the war band that does almost exactly the same thing as for like their special ability uh, or stat line wise as another warband but it's really the way that the entire warband interacts with each, each other so you know we've seen some kind of like you know magic users some ranged users some combat like you know full-on close combat users and then we've seen some warbands tend to have more of like the ranged attacks uh, so they can kind of hit you out of range and then you have to spend one of your actions moving to them to fight them back uh, there's some really interesting dynamics while keeping the game relatively simple and i really really like that especially as an sort of like entry level game or just a like skirmish fun and quick game where you could basically meet up with somebody you know with a couple hour time slot you could play a game it might take the first game might take 15 minutes the second game might take 40 minutes 
and they might have two completely different results, even if they're played with the same terrain, the same warbands, uh, but just the way that the like twist cards and the setup and everything, deployment can all be so different, uh, makes the game really fun, and you really never get two of the same. That being said, there is an argument for the game being a little basic. So I think that Kill Team got a lot of the good stuff from Warcry, like the alternating activations and a lot of like the other dynamics, but it's much more complex and there's a lot more, I don't want to say strategy to the actual game because you can be very strategic in Warcry, but it doesn't have the same level of tactics and depth that Kill Team does. So in many ways, they're sort of the same game for Sigmar and 40k, but Kill Team is like evolution of Warcry. So perhaps with this new edition of Warcry, because this is only going to be the second edition, uh, it will be a little more complex, but that will give the actual game so much more enjoyability to it. So, you know, I am actually ambitious for this new edition. I don't think Warcry definitely, like, needs a new edition, uh, but sometimes a new edition is kind of like a revamp and get new players involved in it. So hopefully that's the case. Hopefully it's balanced just a little bit better, but it still plays really fun, really quickly, and doesn't require, like, a million rulebooks. Uh, that is one thing that I absolutely love about Warcry is when you sit down to actually play, you basically have one actual rulebook and then you have essentially your warband, your opponent's warband, and then their ability cards uh, to kind of, you know, play the game. And then on top of that, you have a couple decks of pretty simple cards to either, you know, determine how you're going to set up your train or you can just set it up to determine how you're going to deploy your guys or again, you can you know kind of do your own thing if you want and then what the actual like mission is basically as well so there's quite a few variables it is relatively simple i like the idea of minimal amounts of books and materials required to play the game so you can focus more on the models and the terrain i really like that so hopefully they stick to all that stuff definitely very excited to see the rest of this warband uh, i think this guy is super cool very very unique it does not remind me of or you know strike too close to home of any of the current warbands in the game so uh very very cool let me know what you think down below are you a avid warcry player is this your main game what do you think that they need to change uh with this new edition uh do you even think there's going to be a new edition or is this just a new setting are you looking forward to you know maybe some jungly kind of like uh wooded terrain sets uh, are you looking forward to more just super cool models or big beasts uh, we obviously saw that massive uh, what was he, like a Minotaur? No, not a Minotaur, a... Hmm, I can't think of the correct name. Uh, but it's, you know, he was like a half... I think it was like horse, half man type thing. Uh, so, very cool overall. Uh, definitely looking forward to what's going on here. Always glad to hear your guys' feedbacks and opinions on what you think is coming. So, is it new edition? Uh, are these two warbands going to be facing off in a new box game? Uh, in which case, we can assume that Red Harvest will be gone very soon. Uh, so the release of the new gangs and the train probably seals the fate of Red Harvest and says that this is not too far down the pipe. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you're into this type of content, reactions, reviews, news, we have painting, modeling, and conversion tutorials as well. Everything from Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, Horus Heresy, pretty much any of Games Workshop's tabletop games. Make sure to like and subscribe. It's absolutely free and really helps out the channel. Helps us out to grow and I always do appreciate the interaction from you guys, the positivity, and the comments down below. So that's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man and I'm out of here.